Yes, I really do just put my foot up here on the counter and go for it. I am five foot eight, and even though the counter is high, I guess I have a lot of hip flexibility from doing this my whole life. It's no big deal. It doesn't hurt my back. I'm not joking when I say that. It doesn't hurt my back. It doesn't hurt my hips. Sometimes I'll take a break. I mean, like my foot can get tired being up there, and it can feel a bit achy for like a minute. So I put my foot down, take a breath, you know, maybe get something to drink, and then come back and do it again. I don't mean alcohol. I mean like grab a beverage <laughs> so that I'm hydrated. And uh, right here, I'm just showing you, you can see the edge of my big toe and the side of the ball of my foot is getting very dry and beginning to flake. And this is sort of my gauge for how thick the skin is and whether or not it's ready for shaving. Once it gets to a point where large chunks can be flaked off like this, I know it's starting to get thick enough that when I shave, it's not going to be painful on the other side of shaving. It's not going to be too thin. And I think there's a misconception that when I say like, you know, I have a problem with frays and everybody comes in and says, oh, why don't you wear gloves all the time? Or I say that, you know, I, I want to be careful that I don't go too thin. People say, well, why don't you use a different method so you don't go too thin? No, I, I have these routines and these methods and these schedules down to a science so that I am comfortable at every stage. I will wait until this skin is thick enough that when I shave it off, it won't be too thin. It'll still be a comfortable thickness so I can function and use my feet. So I've got it over here and I'm just showing you what I do so you can understand. Anyway, now we're getting into the toe clipping so the video is going to end soon because I already made a video about this part. But I want to thank you guys so much for your incredible feedback on my video yesterday because that really gave me a great idea about how to handle my YouTube channel moving forward. For new footage, I will be filming ASMR type videos so that when you're watching the real-time footage, you can hear the clipping and the scraping, and that's just going to be all that you hear. But to use the past footage, which has a bunch of noise in the background and I wasn't sure what to do with it, I think over my son's hands and feet, I'll use music, and over mine, I might actually just narrate it. So 